Hi guys, this is Ashley back with another video. Before we get into the video, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on post notifications. I will be dropping my podcast episode later on in the day. Um, subscribe to my podcast channel. Link will be in the description. And we got a lot to discuss. It looks like the snakes and Nicki Minaj's camp could soon be speaking out in regards to Nicki Minaj. Now, as we know, Deb, who went on tour with Nicki Minaj, um, I believe she was like the tour manager, did a recent interview um, talking about Nicki Minaj, saying how, you know, she tried to reach out to Lil' Kim to see if Lil' Kim and Nicki could make amends. Nicki Minaj did not tell her to do that. Nicki Minaj addressed Deb on X, basically saying that she did not ask Deb to do that. And how she only wanted Foxy to come out on stage with her. You know, she wasn't going to bring Lil' Kim, you know, on any of her tour dates. And how she was basically unhappy with Deb for doing what she did and also unhappy about the interview. Okay, so that's what her tweet stated. Okay, but Deb came back swinging, throwing some subliminal shots at Nicki Minaj, unfortunately, on her Instagram. Some of these posts might be deleted, but don't worry, got the screen record, okay, so y'all can see. Um, She posted a meme saying, never get mad at someone for being who they've always been. Be upset with yourself for not coming to terms with it sooner. Interesting. Then she had another post on her Instagram that says, karma says when you destroy someone's life with lies, take it as a loan. It will come back to you with interest. So basically, she's saying Nicki Minaj is lying about how she told Deb not to do that. Okay? Um, How she told Deb not to reach out to Kim or anybody without her permission. Deb is subliminally saying that, you know, Nicki Minaj could be lying and she will be facing her karma. This is what she posted. Then she posted another meme saying, be careful of her. She keeps quiet in the background. She's strategic. She listens. She watches. She chooses her battles wisely. Once chosen, she fights to win. She is the one, the dangerous ones, okay? It looks like to me, if Nicki Minaj completely cuts Deb off, okay, she will be spilling tea. Now, Deb has known Nikki for 10 plus years, okay? Um, I wouldn't say the very beginning of her career, but when Nicki Minaj wasn't as mainstream as she is now. And she's always said positive things about Nicki Minaj, but Nicki Minaj has never publicly, um, you know, dissed Deb or said anything bad about Deb. Still really hasn't until... You know, a few days ago where she basically said she was unhappy with Deb um, reaching out to little Kim and she did not tell Deb to do that, you know. But I feel like Deb definitely could spill some more tea on Nicki Minaj based on these posts. It looks like she is not happy with Nicki. She's calling Nicki Minaj a liar, saying Nicki Minaj will be receiving her karma and interest. Um, And this is why Nicki got to be careful about who she allows in her team. And the thing is, is like you worked with Deb before you fired her or let her go, whatever you want to call it. And then you went back to Deb. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, we all know Deb could be messy. She was on Love and Hip Hop. She was on WeTV on a different reality show. Deb is just messy because that's what she's used to because she's always been on reality TV. So I don't get why Nikki decided to bring her along. I mean, you really don't need Deb. No shade right now. When you're still the hottest female rapper out. Deb cannot help your career. Okay. At all. She's very messy. She's always been messy. But it's very evident now. Now moving on to Donja Badu. Donja's Planet Her enters the top 10 longest charting album by a black female artist on the Paola Board 200 album chart. Okay. Anti. We got SZA. We got Invasions of Paola. Oh, no. First of all, Botch and Bitter is not black. Doja Cat is because she has a black parent. Botch and Bitter does not. So, next. 
Queen B got two albums on there, Sasha Fierce and the Queen B album. Wow. Congratulations. We got Whitney Houston. I think we got two Whitney albums on there. Okay. We got Over It by Musty Walker. You know, I'm not mad at that because Over It is a classic to me. Um, I don't feel like Musty Walker was able to top that album with Still Over It. Still Over It wasn't as good as Over It. And then we got Planet Her. So congratulations to all these ladies. Uh Uh-oh. Fans are asking Botch and Bitter to make a Kung Fu Kenny collaboration happen. Okay, um, fans want Bonch and Bitter to work with Kung Fu Kenny. Obviously, you know, he has the hottest diss track out, Not Like Us. And Bonch and Bitter did say a few days ago that she was working on a song and she was going to send it to somebody, but she didn't mention any names. Somebody say take a nap. Nope. I'm almost, almost, almost finished with a song. Almost, 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 almost. Almost! I've been dying to fucking get this song finished so I can send it to somebody. So let me know in the comments who do you think that somebody is. Here's my thing. I don't think it would be smart for Botch and Bitter to work with Kung Fu Kenny because Kung Fu Kenny is a lyrical genius. And even with all the ghost writers Cardi B has, she's not. So with that being said, it wouldn't make sense. It actually would make more sense if she worked with Champagne Thickums. Because, you know, they both are cultural vultures in a sense. But um, I think with this new beef that um, Champagne Thickums have with all these male rappers, I don't think he wants to align himself with a botch and bitter. Because um, then Nicki Minaj won't align herself with him. Okay, so it's twofold. If he work with Botch and Bitter, Nicki Minaj definitely is not going to be loyal like she has in the past towards Champagne Thickums. Okay, and you know, she probably sending that to Megan Thee Stallion or Gorilla Glue. You know, she worked with the same five people, but I do feel like she'll work with new people on her album. I do feel like she'll work with some new people that she hasn't worked with before um, because she wants to shock value. Okay, especially when it comes to the features. Not only that, Botch and Bitter's album, her only album, Invasions of the Facelift, is the highest rated female rap album in the last seven to eight years. Okay, now Invasions of the Facelift got rated an 8.7 by Pitchfork. Then they rated Gorilla Glue's EP is not even really an album, but an EP by Gorilla Glue that she put out in 2022, a 7.5. Megan's new album got rated a 6.6 by Pitchfork, um, even though I feel like it should have been lower than that. But, you know, they couldn't go too low because, you know, Camel Face was going to have to make a few phone calls. So, you know, the 6 is where it had to stay out because if it was like a 3 or 4, Camel Face wasn't going to be too happy and Pitchfork was going to receive some phone calls. So they had to rate it at a 6.6 as the lowest. Um, And Pink Friday 2 was at a 6.5. Okay, let me know how y'all feel about that. Now, I think Pink Friday 2 should have been rated at least an 8. But Pitchfork, they're very strict. Okay, and, um, you know, I don't know what's the criteria for how they rate their music over there. But it seems as though they do have an agenda. No shade. Now, speaking of Megan Thee Stallion, the predictions are in. Megan Thee Stallion's Megan is aiming for a top three debut on the Paola 200 album chart with 65,000 units opening weekend. Okay? And I honestly think they're going to probably push it to at least 70,000. I wouldn't be shocked by that. I think she did around... 60,000 for Flopazine. Oh, you know, that came out in 2022. So, you know, these numbers, you know, it's not too bad for what the album sounded like. I don't think it's worth 60,000 first week. I think that it really should have sold only 10,000 first week for how the album sounded. But with this new payola package Megan Thee Stallion has, 
Um, you know, Devil Nation will never allow that. You know, it has to be at least seventy to eighty thousand. You know, because they can't make Megan look like a flop. It's not going to look good. You know, it will affect her brand deals. It will affect how people market her. So she has to have the payola package in effect. Okay, but sixty thousand ain't bad. Um, let me know if you think this is a bop or flop for Megan Thee Stallion. Now, oh my goodness, Queen B just continues to play in Walmart Yonsei's face. So Queen B posted Tiana Taylor and Victoria Monet um, recreating the bad girl moment between Queen B and Usher. Okay, they put on one of the best performances of the night. Now, she also posted Walmart Yonsei's Good Kisser performance, but it was hours after she posted Victoria Monet, which I think she only posted Walmart Yonce because she didn't want Walmart Yonce to feel bad, especially since she don't promote or help out with Walmart Yonce's music. No shade. And then on top of that, she had Victoria Monet go to the sacred salon and get her hair done by Tito Knowles. I was like, oh my goodness. Walmart Yonsei, you got to get off the floor. Queen B is supporting Victoria Monet more than she support you. You know, I'm starting to feel bad for Walmart Yonsei. I'm like, damn. I know she just went in to get out her contract because Queen B be doing her dirty. But no shade. Victoria Monet is a better overall artist. No shade than Walmart Yonsei. But she been a solo artist longer than Walmart Yonsei. But she's overall a better artist. Um, performance wise, she's a better artist, um, writing music wise, she's a better artist and it's really no comparison, but she's like 10 years older than, you know, um, what Marianne say, don't look it, but, um, Victoria Monet is about 35, you know, she don't look it. She looks phenomenal for her age, but she's in her mid thirties, but there's definitely a maturity difference when we're talking about music. And that's why Victoria Monet um, she puts out better music than Walmart Yonsei, but I'm like, goodness gracious, Walmart Yonsei don't get nothing. Maybe she'll send her some flowers and have her assistant, you know, write a note or something like that. But goodness gracious, the next time Walmart Yonsei drop, I'm going to support, you know, I usually don't buy her music, but you know, it's going to be sympathy support, but we got to help Walmart Yonsei get out of her contract. So Next time, you know, we got to support Walmart Yonce so she can get out of her contract with Queen B because Queen B be doing her dirty. Not only that, Queen B's Cowboy Carter is aiming to re-enter the top 10 on Paolo Board 200 album chart with 40K units. Who the hell is still streaming Cowboy Carter? I don't know. This could be some Paola. Very interesting. Who is streaming Cowboy Carter now? No, I haven't heard nobody talk about this album since the first week it came out. This needs to be investigated. No shade of Queen Bee, but I don't know if I believe it. Now, moving on to the Princess of R&B, the SOS tour has grossed $113 million in revenue. Wow. She has become the fourth black woman to gross over $100 million in a single tour. Okay. Um, with that being said, this is why SZA is the princess of R&B. I've been telling y'all this for a while now. Musty Walker ain't doing this. Well, Marianne ain't doing this. Normani ain't doing nothing. You know, a lot of people are saying in the future, she can probably gross 500 million on a world tour, just like Queen Bee. Okay. Um, so congratulations to the princess of R&B. This is why I call her the princess because she putting up the stats. Not just on the charts, but in seats, okay? See, you can't fill up seats with bots. You can use bots on the charts, but people are actually going to see SZA. And, you know, the next time she goes on tour, I'm going to definitely see SZA because she is a phenomenal artist. Now, JT announced the City Cinderella, I think it's a mixtape, coming out July 19th. At first, I thought that, you know, this was a horse foot. I was like, wait a minute, is this a horse foot? Is she taking shots at Megan Thee Stallion? The glass looks like a horse butt, but it's a glass slipper that's broken. And I guess that's her real leg or a glass leg. You know, it was kind of a confusing art cover to me, but it's nice. I like the art cover. 
But I thought that was a horse butt at first. I thought she was trying to do like her Renaissance era, like what Queen Bee did. Um, but, you know, that's a glass slipper. And, um, you know, she's doing basically a play on to Cinderella. So I like the art cover, though. The art cover to me is fire. I just was a little bit confused. Now, Marlon Wayans um, speaks out against um, Kung Fu Kenny and Champagne Thickums and, you know, the game and Rick Ross beef. Now, Marlon Wayans is an actor and comedian, if you don't know. And he said, Dear Hip Hop, it's all fun and games until people start getting hurt. Remember this, history repeats itself. I knew Tupac, I knew Biggie, I partied with them, hung out with them, saw them both 20 minutes before they got shot. Violence is real, everyone can be touched. Don't entertain the devil, I love Champagne Thickums, um, Rick Ross, Kung Fu Kenny, and the game. And I say to all my brothers, there's enough for everyone to eat. Y'all all need to do what J. Cole did and walk away from the bull. With peace, with love, with positivity. Life is short, even shorter if you spend your energy on breaking each other down instead of building each other up. Hate seeing all of our kings at war. We are too few. Stop. And I say this with love. Now he's saying this because Rick Ross got beat up by Champagne Thickum. Um, they said goons, but it was actually Champagne Thickum fans in Toronto. Okay. Now here's my thing. Um, Champagne Thickum started it, and now when the block is hot, everybody wants to break it up, and it's all love. Champagne Thickum started it by being jealous of Kung Fu Kenny and dissing Kim for over ten plus years. Okay, and then on top of that. He always has to mention people's wives or girlfriends or, you know, um, women that these rappers are dealing with. So he takes it to the extra level. Like, he don't have to take it there. So, you know, he needs to come out and publicly apologize to Kung Fu Kenny. And maybe Kung Fu Kenny will forgive him. Okay? Now, moving on from that, Camila Cabello's new album, CXOXO, um, aiming for a top 20 debut. On the Paola Board 200 album chart with 30,000 units first week sold. Okay. Um, you know, I'm like, wow, that's kind of low. But I don't know what Camila Cabello's other albums have done. But I thought this album was pretty good. I think I gave it a 7 out of 10. And I love the City Girls collaboration. Um, I think it's called Day Dreamin' or Day County Dreamin'. I love that song. Um, it's been on repeat. Um, in my opinion, no shade, you know, I like this album a little bit more than like Normati's, just a little bit. And, um, I think she did an okay job. I'm not, I'm not going front, you know, did I buy it? No, I can't, you know, purchase a racist music. That's probably why the sales are not that great. They're better than Normani's, but they're not that great because Camila Cabello is still known as a racist. Okay. Um, that still follows you around and I don't think working with Champagne Thickums, the known colonizer who lost a beef to Kung Fu Kenny was a smart move. You know, no shade. I understand he's a big artist, but those collaborations did nothing for you. Okay? Because at the end of the day, people do believe that, you know, Champagne Thickums is a culture vulture. He's a colonizer. And if you want to appeal to the black community, you should have worked with Kung Fu Kenny, but he probably would have said no. Because of your history of calling, you know, black women, especially Normani monkeys, you know, that wasn't a good look. And saying the N-word on Tumblr, um, that also wasn't a good look. So I don't think she should have worked with Champagne Thickums. It wasn't a smart move. He's not in good standing with the black community. You know, people are calling him a colonizer and people are still calling you a racist. So that's why the sales are low, but at least it was better than, you know, the 11,000 Normani did. So let me know how y'all feel about it. If you guys stream the album, if you guys like it. Got some hot tea on Patreon. Link will be in the description. And I also will be dropping my podcast episode um, later on today. Check that out. Um, link for the podcast in the description. And I hope you have a great day.